So, Rob, how bad was the series in Boston, and what does it mean for the season? It was horrific. It was awful. It was every uh, every negative term you could throw on it. I mean, to go out there, and, and, and Boston's a better team than what their record said they were. And, and they were starting to come around. We were talking about it on the air before that series. Having said that, you got to win one. You got to take one of four. I know the road is tough. The goal is to split a four game series. You want to take two. The fact that you couldn't pull away one win there when you had leads, you blew leads. It was just a perfect collapse. The offense failed when they needed the offense to step up. The pitching failed when you needed the pitching step up. So it just, it was brutal. And as far as what it means moving forward, I mean, we're going to find out, you know, these guys for the most part feel like they're together and and there's you know there's no divide in the in the clubhouse to this point that I've gotten a sense of I think everybody's still you know looking at it going we got 120 games to go but at some point we got to stop talking about it's early we got to stop saying well there's a lot of baseball left yeah there is but you're a half game ahead of the Oakland A's who ripped their franchise apart with zero intention of competing they said here everybody's for sale we're not competing this year and you're a half game ahead of that team that's unacceptable what would you say is your biggest concern right now? Boy, there are a few. <laughs> the bullpen is not what it was last year. Steckenrider is not that guy. Giles, I don't even know what Giles looks like. I mean, you know, nobody's seen the guy since you signed him. Um, no idea when he's coming back. You, you, lose, you lose Sadler at the beginning of the year, and then Masevich has had his moments. Castillo's been brutal. It's it just outside of Paul Seawald, you haven't had a consistent force in the bullpen. So the bullpen for me is is a bit worrisome. I mean, the lineup certainly, it's inconsistent. You got a lot of guys underperforming, but the bullpen is what saved you last year. And the biggest reason you had a 90 win season last year was because of that bullpen. That's not the same bullpen. Will on Twitter asks, if the losses continue to stack up, do you sell at the deadline? And if they do, what message does that send to the fan base? <laughs> that's a that's a boy that's a dangerous one because if they're buried at the deadline I mean the idea that they're going to go out and acquire a bunch of talent doesn't make a bunch of sense so who are they selling who's for sale you're not getting rid of Ty France you're not getting rid of JP Crawford who else has value that's going to be worth selling I mean you got Suarez he makes a lot of money he's a veteran Winker is appealing uh, but he's a guy who's not living up to his all-star stats from last year I don't know how appealing some of these guys are so when you talk about selling there there are pieces that would definitely be attractive to other teams that you're not parting with and again Ty France Julio uh, uh, you know Robbie Ray Marco you're not gonna let those guys go so are they selling on a minor level perhaps but as far as the message that's telling the, that's telling the fan base season's over we don't expect to compete if you're if you're not bringing in talent if you're saying all right the, here's the auction Everybody's welcome. Season's over. You're not competing. What's your reaction to Justin Upton finally becoming a Mariner? <laughs> the first thing I thought when I saw that news is, man, there were all these rumored trades and they were interested. And he, I mean, he was a force in this league for a number of years. So it, it's interesting to see a guy that had been talked about becoming a member of this organization actually becoming a member. We'll see what he's got left in the tank. I mean, he's not. He's early 30s. He's not an old man at this point, so perhaps he can provide some pop. I mean, he's done it. He's had multiple years where he's been a force and a threat in a lineup, and you definitely need it because this lineup is not long right now. You need some help. So I don't know how far away he is in terms of his conditioning and, and being in baseball shape and timing and things like that, but I kind of look forward to him getting up here. I mean, it's not like it's not like he's taking the place of somebody who's just out there killing it or is on the verge of killing it and you don't want to interrupt their playing time. No, they desperately need somebody who can add some life to this lineup and perhaps that's him. Last one, nine of the next 12 games are against the A's, Rangers, and Orioles. Does that give you hope that they could get hot? Yeah, yeah, those are teams you beat. Those are, I still is, is frustrated and I'm just as frustrated as every Mariner fan out there, believe me. I am with you, screaming at the TV things I can't repeat here. But I still believe this is a better team than they were last year in terms of talent. When you look at the roster, I believe this is a more talented team. Are they playing up to their, their potential or the back of their baseball card? No, they are not. This is where that starts. You, you beat up on teams like the Orioles and you beat up on teams like the A's. Teams that have gone into a season saying, we're not competing, 
we're starting the season waving the white flag, we're out of it. So this is where you, you take control. And if you don't, then maybe we all overestimated the talent on this roster. If you, go, if you don't come out of this with a winning record at least, I think they should dominate. But if they don't come out of this with a winning record in this stretch of games against these teams, then we've all overestimated this team. Or there's something inherently wrong in there that we're not privy to because there's just, there's no excuse. There's too much talent on this team not to hammer teams like that.